Hi, my name is Jim Pavette. You might know me from other films such as When Plumbing Goes Wrong and When Squirrels Attack. I'm here in Tucson, Arizona, U.S. of A. This city has been a backdrop of my life for the last 10 years. I originally came here for college, accidentally rooted myself, grew a business, and played in many successful bands. This DVD is going to show you some unpolished footage of the making of Music Has Evolved, including some gigs and outtakes. Also, we will show you a glimpse of what's to come. It all started in a place called Illusion Studio. You want to get behind the scenes? <laughs> I was working on a major recording project for a client of mine who needed some guitar parts. I suggested a guy named Ryan that just finished tracking his own album under the name of Zen. A few weeks later, he came in and did some amazing embellishments. It really took the song to a whole new level. At the end of that session, I told him if he ever needed a drummer for anything, to let me know. I never really thought about it again. Several months later, I got a call from him wondering if I wanted to try out for a new project he was putting together. I was not currently used to playing that style of music, but I was intrigued with the musicianship, and I knew it would be a good step for me playing-wise. So one day, Ryan, Mike, and I got together. It was October 1997. We started playing shows and testing the audience on open mic nights. The announcer would come up and say, The father of funk himself, Father Mike Martinez. After a while, we actually chopped that down to a band name called Father Funk. Playing the open mic nights was a good way to work out the bugs and a good way to see Jaws drop compared to all the other simple blues acts that were surrounding us. Around January of 1998, we started working on three originals in the studio. The songs were written and most of the drum parts were there, but not all the accents to the music. I ended up recording parts on the fly as I came up with them. Ryan kind of produced my tracks telling me what he was looking for. I'd play along a few times and then lay it down. There was just a scratch guitar track and a click track. About four months later we recorded two more songs. Again the same way, but now that I've been in the band for a while, I was a lot more acclimated to the style and let it flow out a little more. Our songs were morphing more towards fusion and prog instead of funk. Mike, being a funk player, was not able to come up with parts that the songs needed. Ryan turned to his trusty old pal, Brent Turner, who was also from his former band Zen. Brent scored out some parts and put them down. Now that the songs were more demanding, we also hired Richard Katz to do all the synth tracks instead of just using a synth guitar. It was not until February of 1999 that we decided to do six more songs and finish the album. Only two of them we were already playing out, three we rehearsed but not solid, and one I never heard before. We did the same click and scratch guitar, but a few things changed. One, no one was going to be there for any of my performance. It was all in my hands. Two, we decided archiving everything all on video, that put a little pressure on, and three, I was going to practice for a week non-stop and then put down the parts that weekend because it was the only time I had between clients. This way I'd be very well rehearsed and just bang it out. Here's where the problem started happening. I needed to get my drums close enough to the remote so I could do my drum parts by myself with no one else's help. So I started moving them, and I heard a pop on my shoulder as I was lifting a stand. It hurt, but I shrugged it off and kept going. 
The next morning, I woke up in so much pain, I couldn't even move my arm. I literally could not even pick up a piece of paper. So much for practicing all week. The day before I scheduled to record, I sat behind the kit and tried to play. It was very painful, and I could not do any spontaneous off-the-cuff licks, especially cross-sticking. It would have just torn my ligaments apart. Fortunately, the rebound of the stick off the drums helped me by not having to lift the stick off the drums. I would just throw it down and it would bounce back up. Needless to say, I was in the studio that weekend recording. My intern, Mike McCarthy, helped out with all the video stuff and getting the initial setup in place. Friday afternoon, we tuned up the kit, mic'd everything, and did a test recording. I decided to try something easy to see how my shoulder would be, so we ended up doing Closer to God, which was a more straightforward song on the album. Since we were filming the recording process at this point, we had the camera in the control room looking out. We did a scratch take that went so well, I ended up keeping it. Hence the bad drum footage for that song. My shoulder did not mind though. The next two days I spent with and without my intern filming and recording. I decided to get everything done except the one song I still never heard yet. I asked Ryan what he was looking for and he said, Oh, you know, a little this here, a little that there, you know. It took me eight hours to write and record that song. And here's some of my best work from those sessions. Ugh, that sucked. Damn! Ah! Son of a bitch. It's not natural. I suck. Hold on. That sucked too. Not natural. We're gonna try it. I'm a powerful guy. Oh! Jim. Huh? I suck. Practice makes you insane. After I was done with my parts, the long and grueling task of recording all the guitar rhythm parts took place. Of course, we tried to make everything as clean as possible. We would work on one song for four hours, and then a few days later, another song for a few hours. Ryan had a ritual that involved things other than guitar work. I'm gonna be zooming in on a different bottle here pretty soon. That's the shit. <coughs> pretty special, can't go wrong with that. That and some coke. And did I mention some of those guitar parts are hard to play? I came in, just redo that a little. I, I came in, sometimes you're shocked with yourself. That was killer. What's up? It's the spice. You can't, you can't even tell that was double tracked. Woo! Didn't I do this already? Son of a bitch. Of, of a clam. In the high house! Woohoo! Son of a... <laughs> Since Ryan still had to write a few more solos, we switched over to Mike to do his bass parts. We started with the easy stuff first, and then got into the harder stuff. You could have never thought a priest could Sorry. be funny. Sorry, got all twisted. All twisted, sister. Oh man, you guys are cruel. You better not be getting this on tape. <laughs> I'll be, I will be in trouble. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. Ah! Okay, I'm not sure exactly where that is. Well, you can just go to that section. Yeah, just go to that section. What are you doing? I'm squishing your head. <laughs> I'll be funkier than a nickel bag of neck bones. I can't. I go slow and I can't play it. <laughs> ah! Then Mike had to go on leave for a month since he was involved in the armed forces. All that was left was prog songs, so again we hired Brett to come in and finish the parts. 
In the middle of all this, I moved my studio facilities to a whole new building. All the footage of Brett, Ryan Solos, and some of Mike was shot in a new place. You can see that there is no soundproofing or even door trim if you look closely. Okay, yeah, it's Saturday. Here's the parts. I'll see you Monday, right? And then, uh, oh yeah, by the way, can you, uh, can you write some parts too for that? <laughs> then also, uh, you know, you don't mind using another guy's bass either. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, can you play all those like fast unison lines like right with me? <laughs> and then, and by the way, we'll just record it on video camera, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure, but, you know. Jim's like, nothing you play is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> nothing you play is good enough. Something in there. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Just helps us make shit up. I think, I, uh, I think, Getty, so think Getty Lee on this part because this was kind of a rush, kind of inspired yeah. kind of part. In oh, thanks place. for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come up with a Getty Lee part up. Get the spot, right? play right <laughs> on the record No back problem, game. huh? No fucking problem. Right? I've got you covered. Yeah. Just playing them root notes, man. That's my job. Michael Anthony. Michael Anthony. <laughs> Thanks, Michael Anthony. <laughs> Thing of beauty, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it oh, looks sweet. cool on video. It did. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing, man? What is that? <laughs> the secrets. Well, let's see how it sounded, though. It sounded great. <clears throat> You're not gonna play me. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm out of here, man. It sounded great. <laughs> I'm Stone Phillips, the man who holds his head to the side. Richard Katz was brought in again to do the synth tracks but this time we used technology to do the work. I gave Richard a CD with music locked to Simpty. From there, he recorded all his parts to a sequencer. Since I had the same sound module, he was able to just email the parts to me. Unbelievable. Finally, in November of 99, I started mixing the album. It was tough to take three separate sessions and blend them together into one album, but it was accomplished. When the album was released in January 2000, we were still only playing three of the songs. We kept trying to build up, but Mike was having a hard time with the prog material. About four months later, it got to the point where Brian and I were going in a different direction than Mike wanted to go. So we let him go. For about six months, we were pretty stagnant playing-wise, but not business-wise. We actually accomplished a lot promoting the album. I tried to get a great friend of mine, Rob Paulus, to take the position, but he was more of an authentic jazz fusion freak and didn't like the heaviness that we were doing. We at least got him to do one show, which another friend Lamont sat in on keys also. It was an awesome show. I was grooving so hard I put my foot through the kick drum head in the middle of the set. I am now officially called Ham Hawks. At that point, Ryan and I decided that the album was so influenced by keyboard parts that a three-piece did not represent the band anymore. An all-out search for keys and bass was implemented. Naturally, we asked Brett and Rich to join, but we got a no from both. A few weeks later, Ryan came back to me with a yes from Brett. I put in an ad in the paper for a keyboard player. A month later, we had Paul Curto step up to the plate. In July of 2001, after three weeks of introducing Paul, I started having severe health problems to the point that I could not play anymore. I told the other guys to get together and do their homework while I was out. When September 11th happened, mentally this hit hard for me. It affected my health even more, but was a turning point to really take care of myself and get back on track. Brian called me up and suggested that we should make a tribute to September 11th. I spent 12 hours working on a remix of Closer to God. This later was added to a Red Cross benefit CD called Simplicity of Diversity. It was a perfect opportunity for us to showcase and get back on track. It's amazing that uh, all of a sudden now when we wake up tomorrow morning and maybe the smoke will appear to a certain extent, uh, it's, it's like, you know, a, a gaping, gaping hole in the soul of New York City. We were already working on new songs and decided to try a few things live. The show was in December and was nowhere near perfect, 
but a new mature Warp 3 evolved. A month later, we did a show with Eric Johnson. We gave him a copy of Music Has Evolved since track seven was a tribute to him. After we finished those shows, we decided to stop playing live and work on the next album, which is where we stand today. If things go well, I expect the release by July or August of year 2003. As a producer, I am going to take a whole different approach in how we record. We will write and perform as a band, take it home, do our homework, and then when everything is polished, bang it out in the studio. If things go as planned, I will actually lay my parts down in two days with different drum kits and sounds. Instead of just guitar scratch tracks, I will have scratch tracks of all the members. This way I don't have to think, I could just groove. So it's pretty integral to have a CD and to have... Well, you have to have... Well, yeah, of course you have to have product. It doesn't matter if you're the best player in the world. If you have no product, you know, you, you can't... Have, you have nothing to leave your mark. Yeah, exactly. People to remember you by. See, the, the, the cool thing about us is um, even though, you know, the three of us individually have, have uh, played with a lot of other bands and we're pretty, pretty known, you know, in the, in, the, in the music scene, respectively, you know, for our instruments and stuff. So with this band, we kind of, you know... Uh, it was kind of easy to get, you know, like a, a following, you know, if you will. And uh, but as far as you know, hitting up the uh, the press and everything, that's going to be coming at the end of the summer. Yeah. This is kind of like the uh, preview of what's to come. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, any last words? What do you What do you guys plan on doing tonight? Well, I'm planning on being. That's right. I'm going to eat. Going to play as many notes as humanly possible. <laughs> no. Plus, I'll be playing with three quarters of a kit, so yeah, we have to fun. adapt the licks to the remapping is going on. In my adaptation head. Adaptation is the only way to survival. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, but we got yeah. a little practice on that the other night. Yeah, that's for sure. So, so it should it should go pretty smooth because no one else tonight is doing anything remotely close to what we're doing. Well, no one really in Tucson does that anyway. But but so that's that's the thing we got going for us i think too, yeah. that it's going to be totally different uh, give people a breath of fresh air I think. yeah exactly <clears throat> you know it'll be something more than a you know a yeah, three chord progression song <laughs> but, uh, i say that politely you know? <laughs> you mean that with the most respect yes, <laughs> yeah. that's the utmost respect there's nothing wrong with three chord progression Hi, I'm Jody. Actually, I've dated a lot of musicians in Tucson, <laughs> so I think I know a lot about it. <laughs> what would you have to say about the Tucson musician scene? Um, I think there's a lot of really good bands. I think the fans are lame. I think uh, they don't go out much, and they're lazy, and they smoke a lot of pot. And uh, usually the girlfriends end up at most of the shows. So I know most of the girlfriends too. Um, everyone's so lazy, they don't seem to go to Los Angeles or Austin. <laughs>